What up, guys? Grim for here, back with another episode. I have a joint rolled up, but I wanted to bring you some information on Canada's Medical Marijuana Access Regulations Program, how it came into effect, and how it's working, and how it's not working, because it's a very unconstitutional system. But like all stories, we have to start at the beginning. In 1987, Terrence Parker, a patient with epilepsy, won his constitutional right to possess cannabis. In 1997, he was back in court to fight for his for legal supply of cannabis. Now, in 2001, Health Canada's MMAR, Medical Marijuana Access and Regulations Program, was published. And it was to give access to cannabis to seriously ill Canadian patients under two categories. B1, which is terminal illness or serious conditions such as MS, spinal cord injury, cancer, HIV, AIDS, arthritis, or epilepsy, or category B2, which is a specialist re recommendation. Now research if your medical problem does apply and cannabis does help. I firmly advise you to do so first-hand research so you can learn the negatives and the positives to your condition and its interaction with cannabis. If you want to learn more information about that, you can check out my other videos. I'll post them here. And you can also check out my other channel. Uh, some of the barriers Canadians face, well, lack of physician support. Uh, the Canadian Medical Association actually boycotted and advised doctors against from signing patients onto the program because they might face legal troubles, but that's untrue. And patients understood that any legal problems that they encountered were between them. And the Canadian Medical Association would have a habit of calling doctors that would prescribe their patients more than five grams a day. And sort of harass them and tell them, no, that's bad. But it's up to the individual patient to titrate their dose. Um... Let's see. And since the doctors are getting misinformation, as patients and as cannabis users, we need to bring the information towards the doctors and inform them that, yes, this is a beneficial medicine, that don't disregard it because it's had this stupid propaganda and fucking prohibition against it. And we also have a problem with access towards cannabis. Now, when you're a registered patient, you have the right to uh, possess, and you're given the choice if you want to grow yourself or a designated grower. There's a few problems with that. Some people aren't, uh, aren't able to grow in their area, such as me. I wouldn't be able to grow in a one-bedroom or bachelor apartment and have enough to medicate myself. And through tenant sacks, I doubt I would actually be able to. And it's very hard to designate a grower. Now, another problem is that there's a big lack of dispensaries in Canada. Uh, there's less than, about less than 30 dispensaries throughout Canada, and there's about 10,000 patients who are registered to the program. Now, because of lack of support from doctors and lack of access to medicinal cannabis, what licensed and unlicensed users have to do is they have to go to the black market, and that's a legal risk themselves because if they were caught in the middle of the transaction, they would have to go to jail. And in jail, you're not given your prescribed medicine, and that's what they need, and they can fucking die in jail. And also, they're dealing with an unknown quality and unknown growing conditions and they don't even know if it's sativa or indica and some people need a different strain for their different ailments. And I know that in the CMA Code of Ethics under Consent 26 <laughs> This is why you should educate yourself. That doctors have to respect the patient's reasonable request for a second opinion from a physician 
of the patient, patient's choice. That means if you go to a doctor and you say, I have these problems and cannabis helps, can you help me? And they say, well, I see your benefits, but I'm not able to help you. They're supposed to offer a referral, and if they don't, that's against the code of ethics. And I know that under Canadian uh, Charter Rights and Freedoms Act, under Section 7, you, you have the right to life, liberty, and security of persons, which means you have the right to be alive and not killed. You have the right, right from interference of government and the right not to be physically or mentally or psychologically harmed. Which means if you have, if there is a medicine that you deserve access to, and there's a system built to give you access, then you better be given that access. Because not doing that is going against your constitutional right to live as a free person with a quality of life just like anybody else. Some people use cannabis just to, just to make life more enjoyable. But people with medical disorders and chronic health conditions use cannabis just to simply fucking live. Without medicine, life would be worthless. And I can tell you from first fucking hand, that is true. So if you are suffering from a medical condition, talk to, your about it. talk to your doctor about it and talk to him about cannabis and bring forth the information that you need to verify that cannabis is legitimate medicine. That's what we need to do. We need to inform the public and kill the misinformation because we will, we will still face discrimination until we bust the myth and until we verify to other people that this is medicine. If it, if it weren't for cannabis right now, I would be ticking so bad, and my social anxiety would be, would be so bad that I wouldn't even be able to produce these kind of videos to bring the, forth this information. Because if it wouldn't work for cannabis, well, I'd just be some crazy ass fucking guy talking to himself in his apartment. <laughs> it really helps people. So please, pass this information along. And we will fight until the day that we gain our access. From 2000, from 1987 up until now, there have been many people fighting for federal access. The most recent, Matt Murnau, uh, Murnawana man, he struck down Canadian law. And he is federally exempt to possess cannabis for his medical condition. And that is fucking awesome. Myrna Wana Man, you've been my fucking inspiration. That even if you're sick, you can fucking fight. And not to let anybody fucking push you around. Because when you're sick, you realize the true nature of this beautiful fucking medicine. And more, need, more people need to realize that. And I advise you to fight for it before you encounter a problem like that. So, if you're against cannabis as medicine, well, I really hope that nobody, that you or nobody in your family suffers from a serious illness and has to use cannabis. Okay? Please fight for cannabis as medicine. It is vital. We need this. Please pass along this information. Comment down below. Like the video. Subscribe. It really helps me out. Thanks, guys. Peace.